Okay, well, I think the time has arrived. And so I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to call roll, please. Mr. Kanine? Here. Mr. Schneider? Here. Mr. Smedchammer? Here. Mr. Hoffman? Rob, you're muted, I think. There you go. Hear me? All right. Yeah, now you can. hear you. Thank yeah. you. Through to the chair, we do have a quorum. All right. Thank you. Um, then we'll uh, have the approval of the consent um, calendar, which is uh, items nine through 11 of uh, the agenda, which includes both the approval of the prior minutes um, almost exactly a year ago, and then the um, uh, acknowledgement of the two emergency variances, and then, of course, the next scheduled meeting, which is still uh, problematic. So do I have a motion to approve those three consent items? I'll move to approve. All right, thank you. The motion has been moved by Rob. Is there a second? I'll second, second this, Gerald. Okay, thanks, Gerald. Any discussion? Uh, if not, uh, may we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kanai? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Smedshammer? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Through to the chair, motion passes. Thank you. All right, then I will now call the public hearing of the Highway 99 landfill, which is docket N November 2208S um, for a short variance um, and ask the uh, petitioner uh, or the person appearing the petitioner to um, identify themselves uh, and their capacity, please. Yes, uh, good morning. This is Patrick Womble. I'm the environmental resource manager here with the Merced County Regional Waste Authority. All right, thank you. Um, before we then get started, um, I need to have the uh, oath uh, administered to anyone who may be um, testifying. If you would raise your right hand and repeat, um, I solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give in this matter now pending will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth, so only God. Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I turn the matter over to Mr. Moore from the uh, district to uh, give us an introduction. Right. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Shannon Moore. I'm an air quality specialist here at the district. Before you this morning is Highway 59 Landfill. They are a class three solid waste disposal facility in Merced County that accepts non-hazardous and inert waste from municipal and commercial sources. The facility is permitted with the district as a solid waste landfill with a gas collection system that is controlled by a flare. The facility permit conditions state that total waste material accepted by the landfill shall not exceed 2,126 tons per day. While waste acceptance rates vary seasonally, the landfill has never had a problem staying below the permitted limit. Historically, peak waste acceptance has been as high as 1,900 tons per day during the fourth quarter of the year. On September 27th of this year, Highway 59 landfill was contacted by Mariposa County to provide disposal services in support of cleanup efforts for the Oak Fire, which started on July 22nd of this year and burned over 19,000 acres. The amount of material expected to arrive for disposal will exceed the landfill's permitted daily limit. Therefore, Highway 59 landfill is requesting a variance from the daily limit for total waste material accepted by the facility. Governor Newsom proclaimed a state of emergency for Mariposa County due to the effects of the Oak Fire, which destroyed 127 homes and 66 outbuildings, threatened critical infrastructure, and forced the evacuation of more than 3,000 residents. The Oak Fire was a natural disaster beyond the control of Mariposa County or the petitioner. Merced County, who also regulate Highway 59 landfill and set a daily limit for waste material accepted, has waived the landfill's daily limit for this Oak Fire cleanup project. The requested short variance would be effective from October 10th, 2022 until January 8th, 2023 inclusive. If granted, the variance would allow Highway 59 landfill to exceed their daily limit of total waste material accepted in order to expedite cleanup of the Oak Fire. The district is not opposed to the petitioner's request and recommends that Highway 59 landfill be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages three and four. And that concludes the district's presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Moore. 
Mr. Womble, uh, do you have anything that uh, you would like to add? Uh, no, I think uh, Shannon covered it quite well. So my only question is, is the length, uh, which seems relatively short, sufficient time to clear uh, most of that debris? Uh, or is, is uh, am I thinking uh, incorrectly? Um, the uh, contractor has estimated, or I should say they desire to have everything done and cleaned up in the next six to eight weeks. Um, they have, or they, they were actually hoping the whole project would take six to eight weeks. And this, this of course, started a couple of weeks ago. Um, the, they have 10 crews um, on site each day. Um, and so they think that they're, they're wanting to get done by the beginning of December, maybe the first or second week in December. But by then, the, the tonnage will have tailed off, most likely. Oh. Um, and and we'll, we'll have dropped again below our limit. I see. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone from the public um, have any questions or wish to comment? And likewise, the members of the board, uh, questions or comments of either uh, the staff or Mr. Womble? Due to the chair, we have a comment from Mr. Hoffman, and we do also have a comment from the public. But All right. Let's uh, go ahead and have a comment from the public. Uh, First, please. Okay, our first comment is from Eric. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Board. I am Eric Sergiank. I'm the County Health Officer and the Air Pollution Control Officer for uh, Mariposa County and appreciate your consideration of this item. And uh, to the Chair's question about uh, the length of the variance, um, working closely with the contractor who's doing debris removal, their intent is to be done by Thanksgiving. Um, they are a little bit slower than that, so I'm actually thinking more uh, towards the end of November, but the variance through January will be more than sufficient. Um, and again, appreciate your consideration for this and uh, for the variance on the, the Highway 59 landfill, and I'm available for any other questions uh, specific to Mariposa County that I may be able to answer. All right. Well, thank you, sir. I just was concerned. I didn't want them to have to come back for an additional extension because of the time delay as well as the cost, of course. Yeah, no, thank you for that consideration. Okay. Um, and then uh, Rob or Mr. Hoffman, you have a question? Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, this would be for staff. I'm just in looking at, at condition, the pros condition number five. And I'm just the, it's basically it's stating that if there's, if they anticipate that they're gonna um, have operational conditions that are likely to cause a nuisance, they would need to cease immediately. Who's making that determination? That, that it seems very, the, the wording on that's incredibly broad. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's, that, that condition is typical of other conditions we put in, in a lot of our permits. If, if we get a complaint or if they become aware um, from the public that, there's a, a nuisance situation, um, then they do need to take actions. Uh, they, essentially, this variance does not um, allow them to continue to operate or provide any kind of waiver for nuisance situations. Okay, but they, would the staff be making that determination? Who, who would conclude it? Was, that nuisance generally is the result of a complaint. So if we receive complaints, it may be something where we go out and observe it. Um, it may be something that could be brought directly to their attention from the public. Um, yeah, and... Mr. Hoffman, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, the district would make the determination if a nuisance has occurred and there's a violation of our nuisance rule. There is a, a requirement that, a, um, that it be public complaints and there's a threshold for a certain amount of complaints. And then we would say you're in violation of our nuisance rule. Obviously, it's, it's, it's sort of a broad and vague rule by its nature. But there is a process in place. Yeah, would... absolutely. absolutely. Okay, cool. Appreciate the clarification. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions by the board or public? I, I have a one question about the dates, just the recommendation number one is, are we approving something that is already begun happening? Uh, it says October 10th, is that right? It does sound like the efforts have begun. I, I guess the landfill, correct me if I'm wrong, will not accept or start accepting 
waste or if they are, it won't be over the limit until October 10th. That would be the effective period for the variance. That's the filing date. Yes, I can confirm that. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't um, we didn't receive any waste that exceeded the daily tonnage limits prior to that date. That's right, it was October. Okay. Um, yeah, that was the date it was filed, I, I believe. And yeah, I. Yeah, yeah we backed the date, uh, Chairman Kanai, to that, which is allowable, you know, in case they started receiving. I was in communication with Patrick throughout this process, but we wanted to establish that date um, in case they started receiving stuff early and went over their limit, because we knew we wouldn't be able to hear it until. November 3rd. Well, that's customary that though, but that's been customary with all of our, Correct. it's never, our effective dates have never been the date that we meet because that's takes too long. So. Yeah. And in full transparency, uh, we have had six days of exceedances so far. Um, it started last week when they brought on their additional crews. Mm. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions or concerns by anyone? If not, I'll call, close the public portion of the meeting and then ask for further discussion by the board. And if no further discussion, I will entertain a motion approving or denying the um, application for short variance uh, by Highway 59. Through to the chair, we do not have any more public comment. Thank you. All right, someone don't be shy. <laughs> uh, well, I can I can give it a go. Um, so I would move to approve that Highway 59 landfill petition for a short variance set forth in docket number N2208S uh, with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by references set forth in the staff report. The variance shall be effective for a period, um, looks like October 10th, uh, 2022 until January 8th, 2023. 28th. I'm sorry, uh, January 8th, 2023. Uh, is that's what I'm seeing on the paperwork, that's right? That's correct, yes. Um, and shall be subject to the conditions on pages three and four of the staff report. All right, thank you. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded by Mr. Um, Mr. Hoffman is second. Um, any further discussion? All right, if not, then I'll ask the clerk to call roll call vote, please. Okay, Mr. Kanai? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Schmedshammer? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Through to the chair, motion passes. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all. And uh, both the landfill and the county, I give you uh, our public support. It's a terrible disaster and uh, I, I can't even begin to imagine the uh, efforts required. So you have our support for sure. Um, okay, and then this is the time for any public comments. And uh, if not, the next scheduled meeting is the seventh, but um, I'm assuming we yet do not yet have any applications, <clears throat> Mr. Moore. Okay. Nothing else on the docket at this time. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and uh, happy Thanksgiving and all if we don't meet. Chairman, can I, isn't there another item on the agenda? Or was that from my looking at the... Uh... It, it probably is. I'm having trouble with my contact lenses, and so I can't, I'm having trouble reading. No. Let's see. Let me get back up to the beginning. I was in the middle of the... Uh, No, we covered everything on the consent calendar. I think we're good. How about item seven? 
Well, do you have any new business? Uh, is Am I looking at last year's information or is this the time for nominations? Oh, oh that was 22. That, was some, that, that is something, mind. well. That, yeah, that and I don't, I don't have a clear answer on this. And I, Isela, I don't know if you do either. They, they had their, um, they nominated, since they haven't met in a year, calendar year, they did their nominations for chair, vice chair a year ago. That was last November. Yes, and that was for 2022. So we're covered for the rest of the year, but in case, because the Northern region's the, the lowest frequency of having variances. So we possibly could not meet again for several months. I don't know. If we need to have the nominations now for 2023, or if we just wait until we have a meeting in 2023. Is it permissible since it's not on the agenda to have the nominations and elections, I have no problem doing it because I I think that you're right. Um, it's probably unlikely that we're gonna meet until several months into next year. So um, if it's permissible uh, through county, through council, then I would suggest that we go ahead and do that. Um, can you give me a minute to just sure. confirm that it is permissible? Sure. Okay. Um, and maybe while you're looking for that, can I ask, is the plan to meet virtually in Zoom uh, going forward indefinite? Is that is that we, the new? You know, we've discussed that internally. I know the emergency declaration, it sounds like from the governor ends in February, if I remember correctly. Um, so I think if that were to officially end and they don't modify the Brown Act, um, it might lead to us having to meet in person again but i don't know yet we've been asking that because you know our point of view is it's more convenient for everybody and it gives more access to the public which is the point of the brown act that the public can be rightfully able to attend these meetings i i would think that people are it's, it's facilitates them meeting through this means much easier than people having to drive to modesto or something but we don't have a clear answer yet we're hoping that we can continue it um, but we don't know yet. Practically, is there any issue if we don't worry about nominations until the next meeting, irrespective of where we move into next year? I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it affects anything, Mr. Hoffman, but I, I think Isel is just conferring with lead counsel who's right across there. She, Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so what we can do today is <clears throat> you can do nominations, but you since it's not on the agenda, we wouldn't be able to take action. So right. what I would say is if you want to do the nominations today, we can do that, put it on the agenda for December 7th, and then on December 7th, just meet solely for taking action on that as, as long as there's nothing else on the agenda for that day. If something does come up and there's something on the agenda for December 7th, then we can um, take action on the nominations towards the end of once everything else is handled. But either way, we can't do there's no action can be taken today regardless. So no action normal. today since there's no uh, since it's not on the agenda. Let's just agendize it for the next meeting and move and do it next time. I don't think it's worth the right. Isela, is there an issue if we don't have a a you know, nomination election prior to 2022 ending. Well, what I was hearing, maybe I misunderstood that it sounds like this would be, we would, we would meet for, we would meet next month for that, for the purpose of that, of doing the actual vote regardless. So if we're going to have to work, so we will be meeting on the seventh. It sounds like irrespective of. Well, that doesn't seem very practical from a cost That's standpoint and we so agendize it. <laughs> my my i don't know if council can for corporations it's their annual elections but the officers serve until their replacements have been elected so if it turns right. out that there's a delay then technically we can still act as is in this year and so my personal suggestion would be to wait until we have an actual 
uh, application and then put on that same agenda the nomination and election of the board and that because uh, otherwise it you know it costs for these meetings and uh, um, so anyway that would be my suggestion if everyone's okay with that okay give me one second I am because Clay you're asking me if it's okay to not do nominations before the end of the 2022 year, correct? Right, and uh, right. It, like most, not sure. most corporate laws state, nonprofit yeah, or profit, right. that they, officers and directors continue to act until replaced or they resign. So even if we go into January, February of next year, that we're still legally entitled to act. Give me one second. I mean, ultimately, I don't think it matters in terms of we don't need to do anything today, either way. <laughs> well, that that would be my thought, exactly. Correct, but just maybe if we can get an answer whether or not you have to meet in December for that, then at least we'll know that. Yeah. Well. What what we can do is we can, I can find out the information and send out an email um, if that is better for you guys than waiting, because I do have to ask. That's something yeah. that I that I'm not. Um, sure. I would prefer. I would, I would prefer that because again, I don't see there's any. We're not if we're not going to act today, and if it if we have to meet, we meet. If we don't, and it can be moved to the next time we have an agenda item, then great, we'll do it then. Okay. And, so, and the, the other so thing, it is, it yeah, is cool. okay to wait um, as long as everyone understands that the existing chair stays that stays the chair until the next chair is approved. So I have no objection to that. And. I can always be deposed voluntarily, yeah. voluntarily or otherwise. Uh, we'll, we'll riot if there's a problem. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, one final uh, thing, um, Estrella, I, if you would make sure that you change my email to my new uh, email address, please, or whomever does that, it's um, mkanai at gianelli, G I A N. E L L I dash law dot com. Okay, we'll get that changed. All right. Thank you all. And I will then uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.